existence is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D Squared. Greetings, New Year's Revelers. This is The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared, with... Brian Held. Brian Held. Happy freaking New Year, buddy. Happy New Year to you, my friend. Mumbuli, mumbuli, mumbuli. <laughs> ha! So uh, this is a very special episode, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, yeah. We're going to kind of look back at the whole year. Man, it's been a heck of a year. You know, it, it's funny. As, as we were discussing how the hell we were going to put this show together, we were like, man, we started off this year on uh, Fox Sports 1280. We did, yeah. And uh, in April 9th, we moved over to WRNO. Great move. Yeah, and so like, geez, April... May, June, geez. All right, I can't I, math. I can't do math. Right, it's it's like eight months. Wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you know, we started off there, and uh, now we're over here on WRNO, and uh, we had a bunch of guests over the years, and so uh, this show we're going to basically do like a a year in review for all the great guests that we've had over the course of the year. Yeah, and it was definitely tough to pick. We had so many great interviews over the course of the past year, but these are some of the ones that we enjoyed the most. That we are they're our top picks. Yeah, absolutely. So like uh, I think our First one is Mr. Timothy Zahn, right? Right, and then we've got Sean Gunn and Chad Coleman in the second segment. That's right. So, yeah, you'll, you'll hear us even say Fox Sports 1280 because the two of those episodes uh, were, were back when we were on 1280. Yeah, and then uh, third segment will be Terry Brooks and then Brian O'Halloran to close us out. I think it's the other way around, huh? Uh, nope, that's what my notes say. Well, your notes are wrong. Yeah. Your notes are never right. Well, before we get into those great interviews, you want to talk about next week, we're going to be at Wizard World Comic Con. We are, man. So this will be our, what, Jesus, five times we've been doing this thing? Yeah. Remember back when we were at the unnamed station and we did like a two-hour live show there? I do remember that. That Good was crazy. God, that's insane to think of. Wow, man. Yep, but uh, congrats to all of our ticket winners. Those notices went out. And, uh, guys, sorry if you didn't win, but you can still go to Big Easy Deals and get some half-price Friday and Sunday tickets. Those are still available. Do they and, really? Yes. Wow. I thought and, they were – I know Saturday sold the heck out. Saturday sold out. And there's also a bunch of 20% off uh, codes out there. I know Crew to Who has a, a code. I think that's the, the code. Okay. So uh, – yeah, go look, and you can definitely get discounts on your tickets. So yeah, so I mean, uh, we're 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 efforting to get some more interviews. You know, we got David Mazuz last week, and uh, but with the holidays, it's just I it, I think it's pretty hard to get all these uh, celebrities locked up when yeah. they're all on vacation. Absolutely, e- even celebrities have to vacay. Yes, but we'll be there all weekend long, so please stop by and see us. Right now, the map shows us on the left-hand side. Yeah, of the, so when uh, you walk view. right into the main entrance, you'll see all the autographs and the VIP booth area. And just take a left and go all the way down. We're by the kitty area, Brian. And Crew to Who. Yeah, across the street from Crew to Who. Mm-hmm. You know, It'll be kind of good. I can throw Dean in the play play area, let DJ go run around, and I don't know what the hell he'll be doing. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's it's going to be a good event. Uh, i I think we'll have a good time. I think we will as well. We always do. Yes. So. Sure. Well, let's go with that. All right. But yeah, we'll be set up out there. So come on out and see us. I mean, so Brian, did you have any big news happen to you over this year? Um, yeah, I got uh, a new day gig. That was cool. I've been there for about eight months. Uh, kind of you know, right in the same time Jeez. frame as the switch. Was to, it really? Oh, yes. There was a lot going on in April, <laughs> right? And uh, I was on uh, NCIS New Orleans. That was pretty cool. And uh, we did the whole Hopeless production. So that should right. be coming out in a couple months. So, uh, yeah, a lot going yeah, on yeah, this like past back, year. For me, like back in July, we flipped uh, one of our stations, uh, our old station, 1280, is now live local programming, dude. We're going to you know change up the lineup again this year. Wow. It's going to be awesome. Made like 12 hours of solid local programming. I'm I'm. I'm psyched because actually I am the APD for 1280 and WRNO now. They, they 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 hired me back. It's been a crazy year because last year at this time uh, I had been fired. Well, right. they eliminated my position, uh, but now you know they brought me back on full time, and uh, they 
Maybe management. That's terrifying. I know. Absolutely but, uh, terrifying. It's uh, a well-deserved, and, and congrats on the promotion. Yeah, so, I mean, and then all the conventions we went to. Where, Timothy's on. You picked him up at Pensacon? Pensacon, yes. Right? And, and uh, October was so brutal. I was at an event every single weekend in October. Yeah, but October is just, like, jam-packed. It's like everybody and their brother decides they have yep. a convention in October. But uh, what were some other big ones that we, we got? uh Chad Coleman was at QuestCon. Right. And, of course, DragonCon. I finally drug you out there. Yeah. Good Lord, DragonCon. That place is just its just too big, Brian. I love it. I, love I, I like the it. shopping areas because they, they pretty much had anything a growing nerd could need. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, that, that was fun. And so, I mean, Jesus, I mean, this next year is looking like onwards and upwards, pal. Yeah, no. Uh, a lot of great uh, events already on our, our schedule. Um, I know we're going to be at CoastCon this year. Right. We're uh, going to be at CypherCon. And um, I don't know what else yet. It's, I, I'm still that, playing. Well, yeah, yeah. there's there's so many things. I mean, shoot, we got ContraFlow coming up again. Well, well, again, but too many damn conventions. There there are a lot of conventions out there, yes. But you, if you've missed seeing us, you'll see us again soon at your local convention. Yeah. So, uh, all right, Brian, so... Uh, Happy New Year to everybody out there, all our listeners. You know what? As always, we want to strongly urge you to check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek. Check out our website at twigradio.com and the Instagrams, The Week in Geek. And Twitter at Twig Radio. Did I say that? Well, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, we're going to load this up on Spreaker.com, or you can download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet. We're also on iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and at WRNO.com. Absolutely. All right, without much further ado, here's Brian talking to Timothy Zahn. This is Brian Hell with the Weekend Geek Radio Show on Fox Sports 1280, and I'm here with famed author Timothy Zahn. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, thanks. That's fantastic. So we're here at Pensacon out in uh, Pensacola, Florida, having a great time, and I had to stop by to, to talk to you. you. You've got so much great writing that you've done, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about your process. Uh, how many books do you write at once, or is it just a dedicated, uh, do you write one at a time and move to the next? I generally try to do one at, one at a time. Uh, the complications happen when I'm writing a book, the galleys or a, proof, uh, a copy edited version of a different book come in, then I have to book, put book one aside, go and rework on book two. It, it's a little bit of mental whiplash to have to go back from, say, a Cobra book to a Star Wars book and then back again. It does tend to slow things down a bit in my, in my mind. But given my own, if, if I was allowed to do it, I would just do one book at a time, finish it, and then go on to the next. And, and I could see the, the, the importance of that focus, right, that dedication. Now, uh, of course, Thrawn, right? Thrawn is, is a well-beloved character of yours. And uh, what did you what did you think about seeing Thrawn on the screen in, in Rebels? Uh, it was very exciting, very uh, yeah, humbling in some ways. Uh, in some ways, it almost still doesn't feel real. I'll, I'll see him in Rebels, and oh, he's like, cool. Wait a minute, I invented him, didn't I? Cool, even cooler. So there's a... You know, it's it's one of those overnight successes. Twenty five years later, for for the character, most definitely. Now, um, did did you have any involvement? Um, uh, you know, helping develop the character that we we see on screen. No, they had pretty much done all of what all the development they uh, planned to do, and were already well into season three scripts and and such. Uh, by the time they. Re, uh, brought me down to Lucasfilm and told me what was going on. We have talked back and forth. I've, I've pitched some suggestions to them. I don't know if anything's been implemented. Uh, basic, the general things like, okay, this is where you could take him. This is where you could write him out of the galactic story. Since he's not in the classic trilogy, he's got to be off camera someplace. Here is some suggestions. Again, I don't know whether they're uh, going to do that or not. I'm also pitching a couple of sequel books to Del Rey that would also follow some of that same stuff. So we'll see what happens. Well, and you bring up a very good point about the books from Del Rey, because we can see Thrawn, his next book, on April 11th. Uh, you have a little teaser, something to whet the appetite of the listeners out there? 
Yeah, basically uh, the book is a prequel to Season 3 of Rebels. So we will be following Thrawn's rise to power from his arrival in Imperial space to his rise to Grand Admiral over uh, the several years uh, that that takes. So it'll be... Uh, I've picked up a couple of throwaway lines, a couple of other uh, various things from the series. Uh, I've been watching to see, okay, what does Thrawn do? What does this character do? What does that character do? Can I foreshadow that in the book? So I've got a, a bunch of little connections between the book and, and the show, which I think the readers and viewers are going to enjoy. The trick on something like this is to make it such that if the if you've seen Rebels, you will see, oh, I see this is where that whole plot thread or something started, while at the same time, I don't want the book readers who haven't seen Rebels to feel like they're missing something, because it, it needs to be self-contained. Um, so that, that that's that's the tricky part with that, but I think we've managed to, to do that okay. Well, and, it, and it's great now that, that we have, you know, Thrawn established in, in canon now with this book coming out. Now, um, of course, you do much more than just the, the Star Wars universe. And we res- recently got a, a copy, uh, an advanced reader's copy of StarCraft Evolution uh, that I personally read. thought it was fantastic. And I my appreciation to you for, for building a self-contained book that you don't have to understand the entire universe um to to get into the book and, and appreciate it so how was it writing for for blizzard and and that um that universe very much the same as writing for lucasfilm uh they they walked me through a lot of it i was not nearly as familiar with the the, the starcraft game as i as i am with the star wars universe so there were a lot of places they had to kind of walk me through things there uh uh, things I had somehow missed that they had to we had to re-edit so we went through a couple of, couple of different iterations but uh, yeah the, the the goal there was to give again an enhancement something people who know the game who know some of the side references uh, they can appreciate where the history has led to this book whereas people who don't know the game okay here are a couple of references to the history but they aren't all that important. I, you, you, okay, this character is something that everybody is concerned about. I'll, I put that in, but the, re- the reader doesn't have to know anything more. So, again, the make it self-contained, make it something that the, the, a new reader, a new visitor to StarCraft will not feel lost in. Well, and definitely, that's I got it. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And uh, so... Of course, you're you're definitely putting pen to paper right now. You've got tons of, of projects that that you're working on. I know you can, I'm not asking you to talk about them. Um, where can folks keep an eye on you on the net to, to know when that stuff's coming out? Uh, I announce things on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash timothyzon. Uh, I, I can actually talk a little bit. I've got the the last the ninth of my Cobra books. I'm just finishing up. That should come out later this year. The third Manticore Ascendant book I'm doing with David Weber. Uh, we're waiting on David to uh, finish vetting uh, my, my manuscript, and we'll do all that compilation. That should hopefully be out later this year as well. I have a new series starting from Tor, probably a trilogy, but it may be up to five books, uh, Chronicles of the Sybil's War, S-I-B-Y-L about a woman, a young woman who's kidnapped from the streets of Philadelphia and pressed into service on an alien ship fixing the thing with a bunch of human and alien crews. And, of course, things are not what they seem at first, as always. That sounds incredible. I can't wait to see that. Wow, fantastic. Well, Yeah, that one comes out in May, a month after uh, Thrawn. Wow, so we're, we're right there. That's we're, great. We're right there. We're right there, yes. Wonderful. Well, Mr. Zahn, thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to me and, and talk to the listeners out there, and, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. No problem. Thanks for having me on. 
Are you looking for a unique gift this holiday season? Then look no further than Silverblatt Design. They offer unparalleled etched logos in glass or stainless steel from your favorite fandoms. Silverblatt Design etches on pint glasses, tumblers, shot glasses, flasks, and more. Having trouble finding a particular logo? Silverblatt Design does custom work to get you exactly what you're looking for. Professional attitude, great customer service, and high-quality products are available now at Silverblatt Design. Find them on Facebook or Etsy and place your order today. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Autobots, transform, and roll out! Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. This is Brian Held with D-Squared. Now, joining us live in the TubbyandCoos.com studios is Mr. Sean Gunn. Hello. How the hell are you, man? I'm doing pretty well. I'm happy to be in uh, New Orleans. It might just be the greatest city on the planet Earth. I won't argue. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> so, uh, And, of course, you are here for Wizard World Comic Con this weekend at the Ernest Morial Convention Center. So, uh, I mean, do you have anything special going on there? You just... They're signing autographs, stuff like that. Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be there to uh, sign autographs, take pictures with fans, and just meet people. I mean, I I always uh, encourage people to just come up and say hello and uh, chat with me for a minute. I mean, meeting fans is the reason I'm here. Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'd love to sign your baby. <laughs> <laughs> I had a girl one time uh, tattoo had me sign her arm and then had it tattooed. No way. Yeah, she had a bunch of them though. She asked Rooker to do the same thing, so I felt I. I made sure that there was no way I could contract any sort of disease by <laughs> by sharing a, a signature to arm with Rooker because it's you, you never know with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you never know where he's been. Man. <laughs> hey, that guy's a trip. Yeah, we we talked to him a couple years ago. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. No. <laughs> well, it, you know, we want to talk about Guardians, but uh, one of the things you mentioned, I saw it actually uh, online in an article, is. You go to these events, you meet fans, and it's the Gilmore Girls fans that are coming out, right? That's true, yeah. The, the, it's it's a strange thing, because it's not a sci-fi or fantasy show, but the Gilmore Girls fans are rabid in the same way that fans of, like, Doctor Who or Star Trek or right. something are. There's fans who have, you know, catalog every episode, and, and they're really bananas. And so with the, uh, you know, the Netflix revival just came out in November, and so that's been really, really uh, so, yeah, hot. You- you must you must have really experienced like a flood of people at that point. Huh? It was yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I'm uh, I'm very fortunate. So, uh, of course, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out real soon. Yes, I know you can't talk about the the new one, so unfortunately, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, we'll, but we'll twist his arm later. Yeah, <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, how, how cool is that cast? Right, like how uh, awesome was it working with those guys? They're the best, really. They're the best, and I think that for me, I'm so excited about the second movie and about sharing it with an audience. Um, I really think it's fantastic. Um, I uh, it was probably the best experience of my professional career was working on that movie. I didn't know how it was going to be going back on set for the second movie, and uh, you know, it, it, success can change things sometimes. And so I wondered what's it going to be like. And it was 
it exceeded my expectations in every way. It really is like a family on set, and I love every one of those actors and the, everybody. It's great. No, that's. Do you prefer TV over uh, movies or vice versa? You know, man, that's a good question, and I don't really quite know how to answer it these days. I I, uh, I think that because television has has achieved the same sort of status uh, in terms of quality that that movies have that that didn't used to be the case twenty right. years ago. Um, I, I think that now you just chase the words and you want a great script. Um, that's what I look for, and. And so I don't really d- differentiate between movies and TV. It's like I pick up the script, I read the, the read it, read the character, and that's where I get excited. And it doesn't really matter what the platform is. Yeah, well, and, I, and we get we get into this all the time, right? If it's a good story, it's going to sell. Story wins the day, right. always. So, so now, like, what for the hours that you got to work is like? Are you doing twenty hours a day for both, like for TV, or I mean, what like? Hours are the, yeah. What's the well? Longest? You know, the, the movies I've been doing lately. It depends on the budget of the movie, <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, things are a little. We still we still work long hours on on Guardians, but it's not like the television hours where you're on, on a time time schedule and you've got to get the next episode started. You know, uh, on a certain day. So uh, hours are a little bit longer in TV, but you know, yeah. that's, no, that's why cool. I get paid the big dollars. Yeah. Brian. <laughs> Us too. So, um, I'm, I'm going to ask this one specifically for Dave because he's goofy like this. You did a series, of, uh, we're going back to 08, called PG Porn. Oh, Whoa! yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell me about so, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm a co creator of PG Porn. PG Porn was a weird idea I had like 15 years ago um, that my brother James held on to and really liked. And then when uh, Spike.com came to him and wanted him to produce some shorts he he said how about this idea and uh, and then he took it and run with it and kind of made it made it what it was but it's just a silly com- group of comedy shorts it's porn for people it's for people who love everything about porn except the sex <laughs> what? and so people who really just watch for the stories <laughs> and so we yep. cut that you know we cut the 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 uh you know the the worthless Sex part, like nobody's really watching right. for that. You're there for the story. We were just saying, story wins the day, right? Right, exactly. I'm the, I'm the story. I've come to fix the zinc. <laughs> so that's what we, right. It's like, what's going to, is he going to fix the sink or not? <laughs> they never get to that part. Right. So anyway, yeah, it's just a silly. <laughs> my, and, and my fav- I think by far my favorite is the Nathan Fillion one, nailing the boss's wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. That's a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of Helpful Bus, which is where they, it's, uh, it's you know, these, these guys ride a van around the city, and they pick up these attractive women, and then they take them where they need to go. <laughs> How polite! <laughs> like Boy Scouts. Oh, Man. God, I gotta watch this now. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, let's let's focus on something a little more more recent. You were talking about a project that's coming out March seventeenth, Belco Experiment. Yes, sir. It's very cool. It's a uh, it's a horror film. My brother James wrote it and produced it, and Greg McLean who directed Wolf Creek as the director, a whole bunch of great actors. I don't even know where to begin, but um, Tony Goldwyn, John C. McGinley, uh, John Gallagher, Brent Sexton, uh, on and on, Rusty Schwimmer, Audrey Arjona, anyway. Um, and uh, it's about a group of Americans who work in an office building in Bogota, Colombia, and one day the... Building shuts down and a voice comes on over a loudspeaker and instructs them to kill or be killed. And so they uh, they have some choices to make and pandemonium breaks loose. Nice. Yeah. And that's yeah. Uh, an MGM flick. It's an MGM uh, Blumhouse flick. Yeah. And I uh, I play Marty. I'm the uh, stoner who works in the cafeteria <laughs> who starts to lose his mind a little bit when things go crazy oh i think i figured he'd be that the stoners are always the ones who usually survive i cannot the uh, stoners confirm nor the deny virgins. that yeah yeah <laughs> right that's true no that's cool so you know you mentioned you, your brother a couple of times you come from an entire family of of creatives that's of, true of, you know actors and writers producers and stuff uh, how's Thanksgiving dinner? Is it real competitive, <laughs> right? You know what's one, and a weird thing about my family is that we're we're su- there's six of us. Less than eight years separates the six of us, so we're all like, you know, you can tell my parents were Irish Catholics, but uh, <laughs> but we um, 
I, I don't really know why, but we're not real competitive in my family. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I think it's something that I'm very grateful for. But uh, I think we root for one another's success. And uh, it's one of the things that's enabled us to work together on various projects from, from time to time. So, uh, so I'm glad there's not too much, uh, you know, there's no fighting about that stuff. We'll fight yeah. about other stuff. I did more movies than you. No, <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's great. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, we're yeah. going to be at Wizard yeah. World Comic Con all weekend long. Uh, that's uh, January 6th, 7th, 8th this weekend at the Ernest Morel Convention Center. Uh, so, uh, you know, Sean, thank you so much. Thanks for, for having me. Yeah, come by. If you're down at the Wizard World, just come over to my table and say what's up and we'll we'll chat. Absolutely. All right, well, thanks so much. We'll see you there. All right, thank All you. Right. Welcome back. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. This is your boy D-Squared with Mr. Chad Coleman. Chad Coleman, how the hell are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm great, man. I'm great. Couldn't be better. So uh, and if anybody's maybe been under a rock and they don't know who you are, uh, you were Tyrese in uh, The Walking Dead. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> and uh, you are Clyden in, in the Orville. Yes. Yes. And S- Seth MacFarlane's new show. Yeah. Well, so, you know, we we got a little advanced screening from our friends over at Fox Eight, and uh, we got to see three of the episodes before they aired. And uh, you know, we, we really praised the show, and, and now that we've seen more episodes as the, as the season's progressing, it really has taken a slot of the old Star Trek, where it really takes some of the old. Uh, the show Nichols called it morality plays back uh, when the f- show first aired, and she said that you know it's like they're tackling a lot of the, the topics of the day. Do you feel like the Orville is doing that as well? Oh, uh, sure. Um, it's like c- continuing on in the tradition from where it began, you know. But with Seth putting his own twist on it, right? Which is it's, it's great. It's, it's an homage to the old, uh, you know, back in the day. But it's also fresh and new because, you know, Seth's a mad genius and uh, it's, incre- it's incredible. It's a lot of fun. So now, uh, I guess, when, when, like right out the gate, I think it was the second or third episode, uh, you and uh, Bordis had a baby. That's well, you had correct. an egg. He sat on the egg. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. such a great visual. It's insane and great uh, visual, special effects makeup and everything with... Um, Howard Berger and and, um, and uh, Nick Greg Nicotero's company KMB. The guys are great, doing great work. Uh, it's funny. It's just great to see you take a convention and and put a twist on it and and still deal with topical issues in his own unique way. So it, it was great. You know, and, and that and that episode. I don't want to spoil too much, but it, it really it, it twisted and weaved around the subject and then kind of like left it with you walked away thinking you know it, it did it wasn't like the issue is solved at the end of the episode it's like here the ball's in your court court you know that's right that's right and i think that's great television when you're able to do that because it becomes a conversation piece you know you don't walk away with any definitive answers you walk away being able to look at it from all sides or inject your perspective on it and um I think that's part of what makes it a successful show. Now, The Expanse uh, has been uh, renewed for another season, right? Yeah, definitely. We're shooting season three right now, and um, that's another powerhouse. Uh, If people haven't tuned in, you really need to catch this show. It's so rich and dense and beautifully shot and amazing, huge cast, so got to definitely check it out. Now, we're visiting with Mr. Chad Coleman right now. Also, you might know him as Therese from The Walking Dead. Now, you had already been around doing a lot, a lot of uh, theater and things like that. You went and did a show on Broadway. Um, and, and you had a great experience afterwards that somebody came up and gave you a big kiss. Tell me about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was on Broadway, and the President of the United States came to see the show. It was called Joe Turner's Come and Gone by August Wilson. And, of course, we're all psyched. The president's there. The first lady's there. The rock. And uh, and so after the show, unfortunately, the president couldn't come backstage because everyone would have to have stayed in the theater. Wow, yeah, right, right. Until he left. So the Secret Service took him out. 
So I'm backstage, and this woman comes up, and she kissed me in the mouth, and she says, you're a great actor. And the president wanted to come back, and she's got tears in her eyes, and it was Meryl Streep, man. It was, nice. It was unbelievable. I was like, you're the president of actors, so this is <laughs> an unbelievable. This is crazy, man. That's, I can't beat this, you know. That's great. So uh, now the, the Walking Dead is behind you now. Is there anything you miss about not being on that set? I just miss the the uh, cast and crew and you know the, the executive producers. It was just a great bunch of people, man, with a lot of passion and just fun and 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 you know was making great TV. So uh, once again, we're visiting with Mr. Chad Coleman. Now, where can people find you on the internet, social media, kind of you know to stalk you and see what you're up to next? <laughs> at Chad L. Coleman. That's it. At Chad L. Coleman. You can see what's going on. Do but you don't uh, stalk me. Oh well, you know. I, know. I, I, I use that in, in the nicest term possible. I'm sure. You know. I'm sure. But uh, so, do you have any uh, personal projects you're working on? Something that you know, kind of just just a personal passion project of yours right now? Yeah, nothing that I want to yeah. divulge at the moment. You heard it here first. No, That's not really. right. No, not at the moment. Still cooking things up. So. Now, you do some writing on your own as well? No, mostly you know? is uh, take other people's projects and try to, you know, produce it. All right. Well, thanks for visiting with us. I appreciate your time. Awesome, man. Thank you, guys. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Are you looking for a unique gift this holiday season? Then look no further than Silverblatt Design. They offer unparalleled etched logos in glass or stainless steel from your favorite fandoms. Silverblatt Design etches on pint glasses, tumblers, shot glasses, flasks, and more. Having trouble finding a particular logo? Silverblatt Design does custom work to get you exactly what you're looking for. Professional attitude, great customer service, and high-quality products are available now at Silverblatt design find them on facebook or etsy and place your order today black tie tans the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of new orleans black tie tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go first time customers get 20 percent off their first tan find them on facebook at black tie tans or email them at black tie tans at gmail.com to set your appointment going to a wedding going out to the club black tie tans will give you the look you need black tie tans Tell your pale friends. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Now, back to the Week in Geek with local celebrity, Brian Held, hashtag LCBH. Here are your hosts, local celebrity, Brian Held, and uh, and that other guy. Uh, what's his name again? This is the Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. This is your host, D-Squared, with... Brian Held. Brian Held, we have a super, super special guest on the phone with us right now. Absolutely. We have with us Mr. Terry Brooks. How are you, sir? I am fine. Thank you for asking. Fantastic. First off, let me start by saying congratulations on 40 years of the Shannara Chronicles. <laughs> it's a little scary when you put it that way, but yeah. Well, no, that's, I've been around a long time. Oh, it's a, quite an accomplishment. Now, let me, let me ask. You've said before that you prefer, prefer long-form writing of novels over short stories. Have, did you ever imagine that, that this whole epic would carry on for this long? I probably would have backed away a long time ago if I'd had any idea it was going to go on this long. Uh, I, you know, when you start out uh, to be a writer, uh, you just want to get somebody to read something. 
And um, I think I spent probably the first uh, five years in mortal terror that uh, each time I did it, it was going to be the last time and that uh, my career was going to end abruptly at any moment. So that, now it took you a while to crank out that first book, about about seven years to get the first uh, book out? Yeah, I, and I had to rewrite it about three times on top of all of that. So it took quite a while, but I was, you know, I started this uh, book when I was in law school, sword. I started it in law school because I was so bored i could hardly stand it and i just and you know my grades were suffering and i was just miserable so i almost quit and then i decided i would hang in there because my parents were paying for it so that would made it a lot easier um and and just to balance things off i started writing this book and uh, it probably saved my life so now after you cranked out that first one though you became very prolific author after that uh what's what's your average length of cranking out a book now well, now, it wasn't so good in the beginning. The first, second, and third all had uh, several years between them. But uh, after that, I started doing a book a year, and I've pretty much done a book a year every year since then. And once or twice, I've had an odd project that I've finished up, so I get twice, twice times. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, wow. <laughs> so your, your latest book, it's out uh, this past uh, Tuesday, the 13th. It's The it Black is. Elstone. And uh, it's the first of four books that that you're going to use to complete the Chronicles. Did, did I am? Did you have an end uh, to the series in mind over the years, or this new development? Uh... Well, I, you know, for one thing, I'm not getting any younger. So uh, the idea of somebody else writing the ending to the series or carrying on, uh, you know, for, for for all time was troubling. And I thought, well, you better write the ending now, or you're still, you know, uh, accomplishmentous and and, uh, able to function. Uh, (laughs) And then if somebody wanted to carry on from there, fine, but at least I would have written an ending that would wrap it all up. And I I did have uh, the idea of how I wanted to end it in in a general sense, but I didn't have any of the specifics in place. So uh, when I decided to do this, I really had to sit down and hammer out what the details were going to be. Can can you give George R. R. Martin a call and t- tell him? <laughs> that to- was the question. <laughs> That's what I was going to tell him. <laughs> Brian, get out of my head. Yeah, I know. I talked to George about this before, <laughs> <laughs> and you know he's not the only one. Uh, Patrick Rothfuss has this same problem. <clears throat> I think it all has to do with you know your approach. See, I- I've given up with eight hundred and thousand page books, so now I write uh, three fifty four hundred pages. Right. Um, and uh, financially, it works out just as well. So I and and doesn't drive me to distraction in the process. So I don't know. I, if I were George, I'd cut it back too. But I think he likes those big long books. Yeah. So you know, uh, Jim Butcher told us once that uh, we said we he needed to write write faster, and he said we needed to read slower. So <laughs> thank you, thank you for Sounds being like such a, a prolific writer. Thank you. So so. Um, you know, you have such a, a depth of background to your world. I mean, you know, it's going on for so long. Are there any kind of um, Easter eggs or fan service that, that your fans can expect to see in this, this latest series? You know, some would say my books are interminable. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for being polite enough to not say that. Um, yeah, you know, there are. And uh, one of the things I decided when I made up my mind to write this ending was that I wanted to give back something to the fans that have been with me for all these 40 years of, uh, of uh, uh, publication effort. So uh, I, I wanted to hearken back to what I did in the beginning, which was write uh, uh, a big sweeping saga with a lot of battle scenes and a lot of twists and turns and, and memorable characters. And, and I wanted to re do things that would recall for longtime readers, things that they would remember from back in the days when we first started out in those first three books. So there's a lot in there that will harken back. There will be some familiar names. There will be some uh, characters that will be familiar. Um, uh, there will be some plot lines that people will recognize uh, right away as carrying over from those days. So um, I'm hoping that people will enjoy them because of that. And uh, there's definitely some twists and turns. So now, 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 speaking of fans, you're, you're you're starting to start a new generation of fans now that you've got uh, the the Chronicles Shannara on MTV, which yeah. used, to, used to play music, but now they're doing good stuff like Shannara. So now, how what, was that really hard to get all that off the ground? Because I mean, I know you had, you had someone had optioned your rights, but then they reverted back to you, and then MTV got on board. How, how was that process? Yeah, how many? How much time do we have here? Uh, <laughs> Uh, first, I have to tell you that it's not on MTV anymore. It's on Spike. Nice. We moved over to Spike uh, earlier this summer, 
and um, the show will air in October. Um, so we've got a, a major shift there in the viewing audience uh, from from uh, MTV to Spike. Um, you know, it was yes, it's hard. It's in, it's virtually impossible. Um, there's I just did a panel on this at the Phoenix Comic Con talking about. Uh, how you get seduced by the lure of Hollywood uh, to sign on. And th- so they give you a little bit of money in the form of an option, and then they string you along for a while, and then they drop you like a hot potato. And there's never any reason for why this happens. It just is done because, you know, some person somewhere in an office decides this is a really bad idea. Even though you were assured at the beginning it was the best thing they'd ever read, that you were a wonderful person, that they loved you and your children, your wife and all your relatives and everything. So uh, it really takes, you know, the right confluence of ingredients coming together to make the stew turn out properly. So, you know, you need to, you really need to have a writer. You need to have uh, executive producers to stand behind it. You need to have a director. You need to have a studio committed to the project. Uh, you need to have a financier. All those things have to be there. Uh, in order for it to work. And after the movies had rejected sort over and over again, after uh, giving a- uh, various options at various times, always because they didn't know what to do with it. It was so confusing to them. Um, then we decided to try the television route, and that really proved to be the answer because the writers, the showrunners, are the ones who run the shop in TV world, and they call all the shots and make all the determinations. All they need is the support and blessing of the studio. So that really simplifies things considerably. Well, that's, I'm, I'm glad to hear it's going to be on Spike now. I felt dirty yeah. watching it on MTV, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that it served a purpose because I did bring in an awful lot of new readers who were younger who had no idea who I was or what these books were or anything else, but when they saw the show, as as is you know, been proven over and over again. They were curious about the books. So then they go out and look at there. I've got 26 books. Read them all. Um, and uh, that really uh, was a big uptick for me in an audience that I used to have, but I really don't have anymore. Well, that, now you have some, uh, re- they're reproducing a, a bunch of your books now, now as well. Like coming out in the next few months, uh, you'll have like double signed copies and some of the artwork as well. Uh, That's right. Yeah, uh, wh- the first three books. And this is, again, uh, a, a kind of homage to the longtime readers who, over the years, repeatedly have asked for, you know, special coffee table book uh, editions. Uh, they they want, uh, you know, uh, leather bound with uh, new uh, illustrations and so on and so forth. And I always kind of resisted that because I'm kind of a, you know, more of a man of the people, and uh, I think 30 bucks is plenty for a book. Yeah. But collectors who thrive in this particular area uh covet these things they they cover different they cover different covers uh they want those illustrations they want maps they want you know everything they can get their hands on because the collectors are serious people about this stuff so i thought all right fine now i'll do it one time and we'll see what the response was so we did a a lettered edition letter book edition as they call them which are numbered and signed and special this that and the other thing um, and we sold that out in three hours. Wow. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I guess we might as well do this. There's obviously a market for it. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the first three and, and have them all released over the next year. So, you know, I know we have a few more years to go for, for the release of this final series, but uh, what what's next on the plate for you? Do you have ideas that have been percolating over the years that you want to explore? Or? Well, I have, yeah, I do. Um, you know, I have um, other series I'm working on, including Magic Kingdom, uh, which I owe the readers another book, uh, probably about five years ago, but now I'm going to actually sit down and do it. Um, I'm working on something that I'm uh, expecting to publish myself, uh, which is unlike anything I've done before, and uh, it's futuristic, but it's not science, it's not uh, fantasy. So, I don't know how that's going to be received. I've read it a couple times to people at audiences. They seem to like it well enough, and readers always want you to do something new. So I'm hoping that'll carry through. And, you know, I'll just keep doing something. Uh, there's always new ideas out there, and uh, my wife doesn't want me just kicking around the house doing nothing. So <laughs> I'm sure I will be given my marching orders to get up there and write something, for God's sake. Fantastic. Well, Mr. Brooks, we thank you so much for taking the time today. And, uh, guys, uh, The Black Elfstone, out on newsstands, uh, your favorite booksellers everywhere. 
Indeed. Thank you very much for having me on the show. It's fun talking with you. This was a fun interview. You 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 were a wealth of knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thank you for saying that. Uh, you know, you live long enough, you have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, well, thank you once again, sir. We truly appreciate it. Hey, I hope I get to see you sometime down in New Orleans. I haven't been down there for a few years. That, Absolutely. Yes. We'll hold you to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, well, sir, I know you got to get running, so uh, have a great night, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, Brian, that was a fun interview, man. Absolutely. Dude, he laid some knowledge on us. Yes, he did. All right, so when we come back, what are we doing next, Brian? Well, we'll close out the show as we always do with This Week in Geek History. Guys, stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Are you looking for a unique gift this holiday season? Then look no further than Silverblatt Design. They offer unparalleled etched logos in glass or stainless steel from your favorite fandoms. Silverblatt Design etches on pint glasses, tumblers, shot glasses, flasks, and more. Having trouble finding a particular logo? Silverblatt Design does custom work to get you exactly what you're looking for. Professional attitude, great customer service, and high-quality products are available now at Silverblatt Design. Find them on Facebook or Etsy and place your order today. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Now, back to the Week in Geek with local celebrity, Brian Held, hashtag LCBH. Here are your hosts, local celebrity, Brian Held, and uh, and that other guy, uh, what's his name again? Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to the Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. This is Brian and... D squared. And we're here at Southern Geek Fest with Brian O'Halloran. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. So I was told you weren't even supposed to be here today. Well, I wasn't even on the website, so technically I, I actually am not even supposed to be here today. So tell me, you, you've got a lot of projects that you've been working on lately. Uh, one of them is uh, Big Frank, is that right? Uh, Bad Frank, actually. Big Frank would be a porn. So Bad Frank is a guy who's uh, Tom Sizemore is in this movie. It's uh, Kevin Interna Donato and... Uh, Really, really great movie. It's coming out this summer. Uh, it's like a mob suspense thriller. And then uh, earlier in February, I got to work uh, two weeks in London uh, on Jason Mew's new movie that he's directing, his first uh, directorial uh, debut, called a movie called Madness in the Method. And that's going to be a huge, huge suspense kind of action movie in a weird way. Um, so uh, tons of cameos. you got myself. You got uh, Stan Lee, Kevin uh, Smith makes a huge appearance. You got people like Terry Hatcher and Dean Cain. You got uh, Machetti himself there. Uh, really, some really great, great people showing up for that. So I we'll look forward to seeing that. And then hopefully by August, we start shooting a, a Jay and Silent Bob movie. Really? So b- before we jump into that, let me ask, I, you know, I've followed a lot of Kevin Smith's stuff, and, and he always talks about Muse and, and his, you know, uh, progression through the industry and, and how he's just improved upon himself. How was he as a director? 
He actually was fantastic as director. Um, it, but it's weird. Me and him, obviously, we go back 23, 24 years, so we know each other well enough that directing me or, or me asking questions of him, we kind of know what we want out of each other on that one. He, seeing him direct actually other people was kind of really cool, and he knew what was going on, and he had a great first AD as well. Um, so, you know, the people he surrounded with was really great and, and guided him along as to what, you know, framing of shots and stuff. But he knew he knows what he wants, and he knew even then what he wanted, and I look forward to seeing that being released. And I think they're thinking about an October type of release for that. Cool. So, what was this Clerks thing that you mentioned a minute ago? Oh, uh, you mean uh, uh, Jane Silent Bob? Yes. Yes. So, uh, Kevin wants. To, when uh, it's been told, if anybody follows him on the internet, or Twitter, or Facebook, or any of his uh, podcasts, if you listen on Smodco Network, um, you've heard him talk about that like, Clerks three. We were supposed to do a Clerks three, but it's been canceled. It's uh, indefinitely. Um, one of the actors just doesn't want to do it anymore, uh, so uh, we can't do it. It's not like Spider-Man where you can just put the mask on anyone and push them on screen. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is a, a Jay and Silent Bob movie instead. Uh, I'll be making an appearance in that. Uh, as far as the script goes, I don't. I haven't seen any script yet. Uh, I know he's been working like on a third or even fourth draft by now, but he just told me be ready by August to start shooting. So knowing Kevin the way. He edits while we're on while we're shooting and stuff. It probably looked for a release date probably about this time next year. All right, cool. Now I saw something mentioned about Mall Bratz. Can you talk about that at all? You know anything about it? Yeah. Well, what happened was uh, one of the things while Kevin was doing location uh, scouting for the Clerks Three script, one of the scenes takes place at a mall, and he saw this mall down in uh, just south of Philadelphia that was. Um, being torn down, and he's like, "Wow, this is a you know great you know mall for the scenes here in Clerks Three, but it'd be perfect for like a sequel to Mall Rats." And so um, he started to come up with a, an actual feature sequel to Mall Rats and calling it Mall Brats. Uh, Universal, who owns the rights to Mall Rats, didn't want to do a feature-length film, but I think they suggested, "Look, if you want to pursue an avenue of maybe a television series, maybe we would entertain it." So I believe Kevin came up with a ten-episode treatment of a miniseries of a Mall Rats 2 kind of thing. And he shopped it around, and as of right now, um, no one has greenlit this, uh, to, to do a TV production of it. But the thing about television pitch meetings is something can sit on a shelf in an executive's audience, uh, office and not get greenlit till like a month, uh, months or years, sometimes several years later, when they're what about the idea they had about such and such? So there's no... You know, there's no definite that it's not being done but there's no definite that it is being done yet so it's in that limbo state right now so in the meantime i think kevin's going to go off to make um, moose jaws the third in his canadian trilogy which was tusk and yoga hosers and now this moose jaws and then uh, by august we're supposed to be geared up and ready to go for uh the jay and silent bob reboot and he's talked about it on his podcast that it's a uh, kind of like a reboot gag like all these movies that are rebooting that the Blunt Man and Chronic movie is being rebooted in in the world of USQ, and once again, Jay and Bob do not want it to happen, so there'll be a lot of jokes and, and about bad reboots and stuff like that, so we'll see. No, we we love the, the whole reboot thing as far as, like, we're sick of having reboots, so that, that'll be great. Exactly. Now, um, you also do a lot of stand-up, and we talked yesterday, you had an opportunity to do something incredible. You roasted Stan Lee. Can you tell us anything about that? Sure. There was another uh, convention this past New Year's Eve called Nerd Year's Eve down in Dallas, Texas. And uh, one of the first nights, it was a four-day convention, and one of the first nights they did a separately ticketed event uh, in the three giant ballrooms of the hotel that we had it in, the Sheridan, I think it was, um, where there was 1,500-seat theater, and uh, we got to roast Stan Lee, a celebrity roast. If you've seen any of the ones that are on Comedy Central, kind of along the exact same format. And so um, we had an amazing dais. We had uh, Michael Rooker, Ming-Na Wen. We had uh, Ming Chen from Comic Book Men. We had Marilyn Gigliotti, my co-star from Clerks, who played Veronica. We had uh, Matt Lamar uh, Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson, who are the two guys who do the um, voices of uh, Pinky and the Brain. Um, we also had uh, Sean Gunn from Guardians of the Galaxy as well there. And so we went up and did hilarious, you know, roasting is not only roasting Stan, but you roast your fellow roasters as well. So I was the MC or roast master of that, of that uh, gig, and uh, Stan was late. About 15 minutes. This will start at 8 o'clock. And so, like, we need to, we need to, you know, he's, we can't find Stan. Can, you want to go up and do 15 minutes? So I did a, 
did about 15 minutes. And I said, well, how am I going to know when you come off? Like, let's have a safety word. I don't know. Let's use the word banana. I stole that straight out of a family guy. Um, and then uh, banana, they gave me the signal, and we went on with the show, and it was two hours. Now, one of the greatest compliments from that was um, Peter Mayhew's son came over to me and said, look, uh, now Peter Mayhew is not mobile anymore, really. Like, he rides in one of those scooters to get around, and, you know, he's, he's got bone issues and stuff. He's getting on in years. And so um, he said, my father usually just comes and sits for 15 minutes at one of these things, and then, you know, we, he gets bored and we move on. He stayed the entire two hours because the roast was that hilarious. Now, I'm trying to find the production team who videotaped the whole thing to try to get a copy for myself. I'm hoping it gets aired somewhere at some time because it was very, very funny. We had some jokes that are, A, not safe for radio right now, but also not safe for, for office either. Um, so hopefully someone will get that produced and sell it somehow and get it out there. Fantastic. So um, how can folks find out more about you, keep up with your, uh, your stand-up routines, like to go out and see you? Sure. Uh, best way to do it is to follow me on either Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. On Twitter and Instagram, it's the address at Brian C. O'Halloran, meaning the letter C as in Christopher, my middle name. Brian C. O'Halloran on Twitter and Instagram. My Facebook page, you can type in the Brian O'Halloran or the Brian C. O'Halloran, I think is the, the at address that it is. Uh, but it is an official fan page. You can say Brian O'Halloran official fan page. That's the other best way to find out. Cool. And uh, where are you going to be next? Uh, next. where am I? Uh, Niagara Falls Comic Con in two weeks. Uh, and then I'll be in, uh, in the month of June... I'll also be in July. I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina, followed by uh, that Raleigh Supercon and then Florida Supercon in Fort Lauderdale at the end of July. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to, to spend with us today. No, not at all, Brian. It was uh, great having you guys, uh, to have me on the, the, uh, the show. And uh, I love New Orleans. I haven't been down there in, at, since before Katrina. I need to get myself down there at, at some point again. Um, but I've always, I've always loved New Orleans when I was there, and I'm sure I would love to get back here. Well, we'd love to have you back, man. Thanks so much. 